You uh, from Carlisle? No, 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 I'm just passing through. Oh, didn't see you drive up. Oh, I'm parked down, down the road and I just walked up for the exercise. Oh, well, if you want exercise, how about a little game? That'll stretch you, won't it, Mark? Yeah, that'll stretch you all right. I haven't played in quite some time. Hey, let's put a little fuzz on the peach. Say a dime a ball? Put a little more fuzz on it. Make it a quarter a ball. All right, let's round it out. Dollar a ball. Yeah, well. Well, I think a lot of wine, you fellas, uh, I'm pretty good at this game. Fine. A buck a ball. A buck is good. A buck a ball. Oh, oh uh, would you hold this for me, please? Thank you. Come on, you break. Say, maybe uh, it would make the game a little more even if I played left-handed. What do you have, fellas? Cheeseburger and coffee. I'll take a BLT, rye toast, and a large glass of buttermilk. Got it.
guess I ought to thank you two fellas, but you know those guys owed me 11 bucks and you did me out of it. Oh, now, wait a minute, friend. Well, I told him I was a well, pretty good like player. That. Same thing happens to me every week. They break the furniture, the chairs, everything else. They... Oh, wait a minute, you two guys, you owe me $1.40 for the two sandwiches and the two drinks. For what sandwiches? Ask him. Oh, well, you see, I... I was watching the fight, you know, and I got so carried away, and... Well... You know. Yeah, you're a little short. Yeah. Shall I put two more on the fire for you? No, forget it. Would you lose your appetite? No, yeah, just, just our teeth. Keep the tip, huh? Come on, Todd, let's get out of here. Oh, say, uh, I, um, uh, I have a... Oh, thank you. Oh, uh, one more thing. Uh... How would you boys like a job starting at, say, 75 a week? 75 what? Dollars, uh, with a week's guarantee, just to see how things work out. See ya. Oh, no. Don't let these clothes fool you. I, uh, I just use these for traveling. Actually, I have quite an extensive wardrobe. You see, I've been engaging junior executives for each engagement, and it's not working out too well. I would rather have something more permanent. And who knows, uh, if everything works out all right, I may cut you boys in for a piece of the action uh, as junior partners. Now, how does that strike you? But I look at him, just look at him. Why, that pizzazz is just oozing from every pore. Excuse me. Well, where, where are you going? I gotta rush him to the hospital so they can close his pores, because if he loses too much pizzazz, he goes right into shock. What is that all about? What? Well, aren't you interested in girls? Lots of girls, beautiful girls. Why, you're missing the chance of a lifetime. A chance to become vice presidents of Max Minion Coins Hollywood Talent Cavalcade. <laughs> oh, you don't believe me? Actually, no. Do you want to make a little bet that there is a big bus right down the road? with big banners that say Max Million Coins Hollywood Talent Cavalcade and our gorgeous MC, Miss New York, and Coco Girard and his band, and a speaking part in a major motion picture about to be produced as grand prize. And just down the road lies Carlisle, Pennsylvania, just waiting for us to pick from the local crop of lovelies a Miss Venus, a Miss Sarah Bernhardt, and a Cinderella. You want to make the bet? so we don't really have to work. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to introduce our two new vice presidents, Mr. Uh, how do you like that? I was so busy working, I forgot your name. Uh, Styles and Murdoch. Right. Styles and Murdoch. Sounds like an old Fanchon and Marco unit, huh? Oh, honey, they're too young. Oh, Styles and Murdoch, jugglers. You should be next to closing. I'm Max's wife. How do you do? I'm glad to meet you. Stone, welcome to the zoo. I'm a vice president, too. And the former Miss New York, don't forget that. 19, uh, uh, well, you should have won that year. You should have won that year, but you can't win them all. Look, honey, we didn't know when you'd be back or how well, successful you'd be, so Coco and the boys made a deal with the owner. Yeah, 10% of all of his business, over and above normal traffic. But no. that's ridiculous, darling. You don't even know what his daily take is. All right, boys, knock it off, huh? Wrap it up, boys. Max has a couple of live ones. There it is, fellas. Max Million Coins, that's me. Hollywood Talent Cavalcade. And our gracious MC, Miss New York. And, of course, Coco Girard and his group. So, uh, how about the ten bucks? The bet? 
Look, an easy price to pay for being of so little fame. And five. Oh, uh, honey, why don't you show them the scrapbook? All right, my friend, get on with the repairs. Well, like I told you before, Mr. Coyne, you're the first customer in three years ain't got a credit card. But even old Elmer Thompson, it ain't worked since the brick factory closed down. He belongs to all the credit clubs. I'm sorry, I could have some cash. This is cash for the fan belt and repairs to the radiator. And I would appreciate a little speedy service. I don't wish to keep the good people of Carlisle waiting. <laughs> All the evidence. They got clippings from papers all over the country, testimonial letters from Chamber of Commerce, happy local merchants, happy winners. They dig this. Here's a picture with a kid having lunch with Jack Lemon on the set. Hey, here's another one with Kim Novak. Wow. I guess this, this Max really comes through, you know? He really gets them into the movies. He hasn't got car fare. Well, like he said, you know, he drilled for oil and he hit granite. You sound like you want to tag along. Why not? 75 bucks a week and all the fringe benefits. What fringe benefits? 36, 18, and 35. Well, we'd like to get your name. I thought the measurements were the most important thing. Yeah. 36, 18, 35. And you're going to do a scene from Romeo and Juliet, is that right, dear? How long do I get? Well, we have to limit all contestants to three minutes. Gee, I don't know. Mama told me it was hard to build much emotion in three minutes. Well, Hamlet's soliloquy can be done in three minutes. And Macbeth's tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow speech in less than two. <laughs> you can do it. Here, would you mind filling out one of these cards and bringing it back to me? Thank you, dear. Coco, why don't Max drop this category, huh? Who wants to be Cinderella? See, Coco, keep your voice down. Same thing in every town. We always wind up hustling some ugly dame. Coco, name, address, telephone, and talent, please. When you are a tulip, a sweet yellow tulip, and I wore a big red rose. <laughs> don't tell me. You're a trio, and your sister. No, I'm a... She's, she's a, a cousin. cousin. Oh. Now that's not bad. TV set, $50 charge account in the local bank, a six-piece living room set, matched luggage, and $200 worth of sportswear. All right, now suppose you give it a try. This time I'm going to stay in the background. I don't get it, Max. Well, you've heard me make six pitches. What is it again? No, 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 I mean, like, I don't know what you get out of this whole deal. Like, take, for instance, the, uh, the tickets to the finals, you know? So? Two bits apiece. But that money goes to charity. How else do you think I get the local Chamber of Commerce to cooperate? You have to give in order to get, don't you? But the prizes go to the runner-ups, and you still have to pop for a ticket round trip to Hollywood, plus expenses, yeah. plus a part in the picture. Yeah. So what do you get out of it? What? You're asking me? Yeah. What else could a guy do and see the country and be his own boss? So, here I am. Under God's sunshine, free as a breeze. I'm not chained to a desk. And I'm looking for beauty. OK, Max. So don't answer the question. Got any change? Here we go again. 
Come on, you can make it. I gotta make a call. Max, I don't know how good I am at this conning jazz. Huh? Well, you've been watching me. Go in here and see if you can con this guy out of an electric range. Use the same gimmick I used at the other place, where if the guy backs a contestant, you give him a big silk banner with his picture on it that never misses. Oh, Max, I don't know if this is going to work. I don't know if we can get all out on the silk banner. It's Cochran and Allen, Appliances, Hardways and Paints Incorporated. We will pick a tall contestant. <laughs> Funny, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Come on, come on. You'll make it. Come on. Okay, somebody will contact you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Remember me? 36, 1835. Winnie White. I cut class to come back. I mean, Mr. Stiles, you're a stranger and all. Could be lonesome for you. How would you like a nice home-cooked meal? I know a place where we can make a fire and do some barbecuing. Well, Winnie, there's just nothing I like better than a well-turned rib, but I'm uh, afraid you're a little late. Uh, let me check. What night did you have in mind? Tonight. Oh, tonight. <laughs> Tonight's taken. Uh, how do you like that? I'm busy from now through Saturday. Uh, however, I have this colleague now. He may still have some time open. I'll check his bookings. Yes, he's still got Friday open. I'll take it. All right. Winnie White Barbecue. His name's Murdoch. Buzz Murdoch. Tell him seven. Oh, you have my address. I'll be ready and waiting. Uh, it, it's after one, and you haven't had any lunch. Thanks. I, I didn't know whether you would take cream or sugar, so I, I just uh, took a chance on black. Well, black's fine. Well, I, I have to get back. Um, if you want a sandwich or anything, I'll, I'll try to bring it out to you. Oh, Coco's going to spell me pretty soon. Thank you. same block with him when you were 10 years old? What does that do? Make him a genius? Well, maybe he isn't a genius, but he is head of the studio accounting department. Look, I just talked to him long distance, honey, just before you called me. I told you to talk to Jerry, not Lex. Jerry is out. O-U-T. Will you listen to me, Max? I smelled something wrong last week when he wired you for more money. So I had Lex check on your precious Hollywood contact. He called the casting department. They fired Jerry. Do you hear me, Max? They fired Jerry two weeks ago. And he had the gall not only to hide it from you, but to wire you for more money. Who are you going to believe, Lex? You know I hate this kind of life. I'm allergic to any town more than under five million people. Oh, well, forgive me. Oh, honey, do I complain? Well, it's Look, a little late for you to decide time. now. Honey, if you're happy in this kind of life, I'll string along with you. You know that I always have. Well, I'll fly out tonight. Oh, honey, you haven't got taxi fare to a hotel. Well, I'll phone somebody and I'll keep calling. I'll call somebody and, and they'll, they'll, they'll pull us through. We're through, Max. We're all through. No more beauty contest. This beauty contest? We're broke. Carol, and this one will pull us out. And the winner? With Jerry out? How can you deliver a pot and a picture, Max? Are you going to deceive these people? Lie to them? You ever know me to lie to anyone, darling? Did you have any fault, Max? Any fault at all? It's that nobody ever taught you how to lie. circus got in town, huh? Well, we want a few mad people now. See where the sane ones have landed us. George Bernard Shaw, quote, unquote. Uh, we read, you know. The natives do read. 
I wasn't being disparaging. I was just impressed. Fact which in itself is disparaging. You can cease firing. The first burst got me. So why fire into a dead body? I have a talent for it. Uh, hey, hey, you know, we have a talent category. Why don't you register for it? What you're really thinking is that I ought to register for the Miss Cinderella category. Now, if I said A, that wasn't what I was really thinking, and B, you're a fine-looking girl, you'd probably call that disparaging and start firing from the hip again, huh? Would you like another cup of coffee? <laughs> no, I've got to get back. I'll bring it out to you. That's okay. Uh, well, what's your name? Jahela. Jahela West. Well, that's different. Now, that's a compliment. Look, Jahela, I'm going to be in Carlisle the rest of the week, and I'll probably be eating most of my meals in here, except at night. So, do you suppose that we could be friends? I mean, I hate to eat in a tense atmosphere. It's very bad for the digestion. Oh, I, I guess it was just seeing all those other girls and their, their measurements, <laughs> being able to do things, and I can't. I guess I was just feeling like Cinderella. Yes, we can be friends, Todd. How'd you know my name? Oh, all the girls, whenever they come in here, that's all they could talk about. Todd, Todd, Todd. You're quite the most popular young man in Carlisle. Well, I think they think I can help them. Can you? Confidentially, no. The winner is picked by Mr. Coyne's applause meter but... Uh, don't tell them that I can't help them, because uh, on the strength that I might be able to, I've been invited to four dances, two country clubs, three drive-in theaters, six home-cooked meals, eight rides in the country, and 16 miscellaneous. Write it down, huh? It'll pick up around four, it always does. Hey, where's Mrs. Coyne? Got a call from Max and she cut out. How's the Cinderella action? Only got two kids signed up so far. Max always screams if I don't get at least a half a dozen. He's really got a thing about this whole Cinderella jazz. He's flipped on it, don't ask me why. I used to think he kept the category in just to mix some O's with the R's, you know, showmanship. But he knocks himself out over these Cinderella's, gets them a new hairstyle at some local salon, promotes a new wardrobe at some store, goes the whole route. But like I always tell him, Max, you can't make something out of nothing. Listen, Coco, I've got a girl. Oh, hey, yeah, I've seen you in action. A uh, whole woman's auxiliary. No, no, this, this could be a Miss Cinderella. Her name's Jahela West. She works right here in the coffee shop. You know, if somebody gave her a, a hairdo... So, go sign her up. Well, I don't think I can talk her into it. Why don't you go in there and try? 20 years developing a lip, master's degree at Juilliard Institute, and I wind up with someone who damn car while I could have been a carnivore. And, you know, Harry, it's usual routine. You give the girl a couple of lines in the picture, you cut them out, nobody knows the difference, everybody's happy. Yeah, I mean... Harry, will you listen to... Harry! Harry! How do you like that guy? I put him in the business. We used to send him out for sandwiches, and he's telling Max, me... what are you trying to do to yourself? Do you realize that you're starting to beg? Nate! Nate? Nate. Nate Grayson, the producer? Nate Grayson, the producer. How many Nate Graysons are there? Yeah, long distance, please. Honey, he won't even pick up the phone. So I made the call prepaid. Yeah, yeah, dear, long distance. Just because you've run out of friends, do you have to start in on your enemies? It's not a bad idea to have a warm person lend me once in a while. Look, honey, I know it's late, but I want to call Hollywood. That's right. 
Listen, who knows? Nate may be so surprised with my call, he may forget we're enemies, and he'll say, why, sure, Max, send the girl on out. We'll use her in a picture. It'll be great publicity. What do you think? I think we're through. You want to make a bet? That's a telegram from Jerry. He's made a connection. You'll see. Well, Mr. Coyne, I see from your expression you do remember us. Oh, but of course I... But I'm... you didn't think we'd catch up with you so fast. Good evening, Mrs. Coyne. It's morning, Mrs. Pearson. One o'clock in the morning. I am quite aware of the time, Mrs. Coyne, and I can promise you this is one morning the dawn will come up like thunder. Close the door, Mr. Coyne, unless you want the whole town to hear what they will shortly read, as soon as I give it to the newspapers. You're a fraud, Mr. Coyne, but you're caught. Your little game is over. Here, I take my daughter out of school. The Pottstown band turns out to see us off. They haven't done that since the war. And Mayor Rodman came down to the station and made a beautiful speech. And what happens? Nobody was expecting us at the studio. There is no Jerry Ralston working there, and nobody heard of you. And they treated Cynthia just shamefully, just shamefully, as though it were her fault. Well, I can promise you one thing, Mr. Coyne. I am going to sue you for every dollar you have. Well, I, I quite agree with you, Mrs. Pearson. The outlook must be quite dim, but uh, if you will just listen to me, I'm sure I can explain it all. Well, can you explain away the $500 that trip cost? We paid her expenses. Hers, not mine. You don't think I'd let her go to Hollywood alone? I read the columns. Why, look at her. She won't eat, won't sleep. Her heart was set on a career. She just cries and cries and cries. Oh. That's what you've done to my little girl, Mr. Coyne. And that's why I'm going to see that you are exposed for what you are. That no other decent girl is going to be exposed to the heartbreak that my little Cynthia is suffering now. Oh, I see that's talent. Mrs. Pearson, that is true talent, the way that girl cries right on cue like that. No wonder she's bereft. To have the vision of Hollywood right in front of her and then suddenly have it snatched away. You mustn't kill this talent, Mrs. Pearson. You must not crush this talent at this critical moment. The fact of the matter is, I uh, severed relations with Mr. Jerry Ralston two weeks ago, and actually, uh, you were supposed to be there three weeks ago. Well, I, I wired him, and we had a lot of shopping to do to get ready. Oh, I see. Just an unfortunate mix-up in timing. Of course, the important thing is to have Cynthia in the movies, isn't it? Well, uh, yes. Yes, that is the main thing. Well, that's correct. And you see, I, just at this very moment, was arranging a new liaison man with a studio. So I'm sure that we'll be able to get her in the picture. What about the money I advanced? Money? Yes. Oh, money, money, yes. Well, uh, you'll get all of it. You'll get all of it. You'll get it right after Saturday, as soon as our local contest has been held. Well, I don't know. How do I know I can trust you? <laughs> Why don't you ask Cynthia? Let her decide. Cynthia? Oh, all right then, till Saturday. Oh, that's just <laughs> fine. There we are. And we'll, uh, we'll take care of everything, Mrs. Pearson. Have a nice sleep now. Night. Good night.
Which was it tonight? Country club, home cooked dinner, or miscellaneous? Haven't you ever heard of the 13th Amendment or the eight hour day? Oh, I changed ships with Elsie so I could get off tomorrow. I mean today. Want some coffee? Oh, thanks. Doesn't this place ever close? Somebody has to worry about the insomniacs. I heard you entered the contest. I, I didn't want to. But your friend kept insisting. He said it was important to you that you'd get ten extra points if I did. Coco said that? Mm -hmm. I've never won anything in my life. If I did, I guess I'd... Just drop dead, that's all. You know, you need a course in positive thinking. Mm. Where do I get a teacher? You're looking at the dean. Yeah, but your classes are all filled. Just night classes. Afternoon session is still open. Todd, would, would you come with me tomorrow instead of Coco and, and help me to pick out my dress and, and decide on a hairstyle and everything? Sure, if you want me to. Oh, I do, I do, I really do, Todd. Ten o'clock, okay? Fine. Good night. Good night. Hey, Coco, Coco, take five. We need to get a test this deal here. Todd. Right. Our floor's on it. Right in the middle of the house. Let's go to the back there. Hey, design that myself. One half seismograph. Seismograph. All right, seismograph from MIT. One half EKG from John Hopkins. Pretty classy, huh? You ready? Start. Come on. Start. Start a plug. Start. Move down. the judge and jury. Oh, man, I'd hate to throw myself on the mercy of this court. When you were up there, registered practically nothing, but when you got down here in the first row, five points. Boy, if a kid could get her friends right there, right in that area, oh, boy, she'd be a shoo in Hey, can you get along without me for about an hour? Why? Oh, I got an idea. Honey, I, I called all those numbers you asked me to, and it's no use. They won't even discuss the smog. Well, don't worry, honey. Something will work out. Boy, you don't even recognize rock bottom when it hits you, do you? Oh. You know about the beauty contest? Oh. Yeah, I, I hear. How do you like the back to winter? You know, this Olaf Swedish massage and rock steam baths. <laughs> oh. My wife, Finn, two ten. Oh, no. I've got the girl. Won't cost you a thing. All you have to contribute is a little moral support and some applause. You know, she'll wear a banner with your name on it. You'll get all the publicity. Good for business. <laughs> Olaf needs publicity? Yeah. Well, sure. Everybody needs publicity. Bring your father in. Oh, you, you know, is there a Masource union in town or something? Oh, but I got three brothers. And they give good massage, too. Have they got big hands like yours? <laughs> I tell you, when my brother slap you, it feels like this. Oh, oh, that's great. <laughs> well, I, I, I'll have Reserve seats for you right down in front tomorrow night, okay? We like pretty girls. We can. Oh, you great. like my size? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's great. Look, Olaf, I really gotta get back. <coughs> but we just thought. Oh. Oh. Oh, 
thank you, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You have chosen your Miss Venus. And you have chosen your Miss Sarah Bernhardt. And now, and now for the final event of the evening, our contestants for Miss Cinderella. Will you come on, girls, please? That's right, come right along here. Your husband's stealing your thunder. I thought you were the MC. Oh, well, Max is doing it tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I'm going back to the hotel. Right along. Uh, would you tell him if he asked you? Uh, yeah, sure. Fine. Thank you. Right. I'm Miss Cinderella. And now, Miss Cinderella number one, Miss uh, Bowman and Company Department Store. Thank you. Step down on the other side, dear. Thank you, that's right. And now, our second Miss Cinderella, uh, Miss Olaf and Sons. for the auditorium yet. I haven't seen him come down as yet. Shall I call his room? Never mind. We're old friends. Come along, Cynthia. Seeing those other girls all dressed up, taking the spotlight, that's what's bothering you. But don't forget, you've won. You're going to be in the pictures. I'll have Mr. Coyne reassure you just once more. <laughs> some time ago, all these messages. You know what these messages are. They're long distance calls to Hollywood. Out, no answer, in conference, gone to Europe, does not wish to accept Mr. Coyne's call, drop dead hustler. Well, come along, Cynthia, we'll fix his wagon. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that we have our three finalists, you and the applauseometer will decide which one of these charming young ladies will represent and carry the hopes of the fine community of Carlisle west to Hollywood, and then via the miracle of the giant silver screen to the rest of the world. First, Miss Sarah Bernhardt. Thank you. And uh, next we have Miss Venus. Off 
officer, arrest that man. on six different tables and not one of the six families that I served could even remember what I looked like. I waited back in the kitchen just to test it and they all said the same thing. We can't remember which waitress was ours but go find her, we want the check. I'd walk down the street, might just as well have been invisible. So last month, when Mr. Coyne's talent cavalcade came to Pottstown, my hometown, I noticed that hardly anybody entered the Miss Cinderella event. So I quit my job and I came here, and then I saw you. And I thought, it just might be possible. I don't mind not being able to go to Hollywood, Mr. Coyne. I know I don't belong there. But I can go home now, to my own hometown, and people will notice me. And they'll notice me now, because... because I feel different. Todd? Does your conscience still pinch you? I just outgrew it, Max. Just now. All right, boys, you may go. Well. Paul Lex, and he's hired you, third assistant casting director. And the sheriff talked to him, and, and so did Mrs. Pearson, so, so they all know what's on the level. And, and Lex stuck his neck out. He, 
He's going to give the girl a part in his picture. You call Lex to give me a job? Oh, what difference does it make whom I call it? It's a start. A st what are you talking about, a start? Think, honey, look what we've got. We've got nothing. For 15 years, you've given other people their dreams. Now let us have ours. Lex is going to give us our dreams, our third assistant casting director. Honey, what difference does it make? Soon you'll be first casting director. Oh. Max. You really want this, don't you, baby? Oh, Max. For 15 years, we've done it your way. Please try it mine now. Just leave the whole bottle right here. Here we are. Well, Todd, that's uh, $75 for you. $75 for you, Buzz. Thank you. And uh, the 10 bucks that I beat you guys out of. Wow. <laughs> well, I see you're quite impressed by my generosity. Well, let me let you in on something. You know, we don't give all those prizes away, and the ones that are left over will... The merchants don't want to take back. They just wanted the publicity for giving them. And I've got a guy who follows us with a truck and a bankroll, and he buys up all the ones that are left over, 50 cents on the dollar, and everybody's happy. Max, is that honest? What's honest, Todd? Do you think you can split it right down the middle, what is and what isn't? Look at me. I come into Carlisle, I wind up in the can. What did I do? I brought some excitement to a town for one week. I certainly stimulated business on Main Street. And I brought some dreams to a few people about the big world outside. Who can tell? Well, to the future. Good luck, Max. Nice. Well, you know something? In six months, I'm going to have that whole studio right in the palm of my hand. In six months. And if you guys ever want another job, you know what you have to do? Pick up a phone. Call Max Coin. Collect. <laughs> no, no kidding. I never forget a friend. Should we go along, honey? Yeah, well, I'll be seeing you, fellas. Okay, so long. So long. <laughs> Say, your friend took the whole bottle. That's 28 ounces, 50 cents an ounce. Columbia Pictures, Herbert B. Leonard, executive producer.